Hello. On this edition of the program, we'll take a look at the MTA fare increase coming to MTA Transit Services. Light Rail is in the process of refurbishing its fleet of trains and a look at the Maryland State Fair, all right here. MTA TV, the recipient of a 2015 Tele Award for Television Excellence. I'm Anthony Brown. Welcome to Commuter Connections. As required by the Transportation Infrastructure Investment Act of 2013, MTA fares increased the end of last month. This rate increase affected fares on each of the MTA service modes. David Baldwin, Deputy Director of MTA Fare Collection Systems, joins us with more on these increases. David, welcome to Commuter Connections. Thank you. It's okay. glad to be here. Okay. So MTA fare increases happened the end of last month? That's correct, yeah. They actually occurred on Thursday, June 25th. Okay. And I, and I think it's important to know, before we talk about what the new fares are, this was the first increase in 12 years, I believe? That's correct, yeah. It's been, uh, fares have been in place for 12 years. Uh, our last fare increase took place on July 1st, 2003. Okay. And meanwhile, the cost to operate the services, I'm sure, have continued to go up. That's correct, yeah. Um, uh, but it's even more than that. Why is the fare increase necessary? Yeah, as, as I mentioned, fares have not gone up in 12 years, um, and our transit revenues over that time have not kept up with inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, the state has a, a state mandate of 35% uh, uh, fare box recovery for MTA. What that means is that 35% of our transit revenues uh, at a minimum should cover our operating costs, and, and we have not met that over the last several years. Okay. Now, the exact increases, are they for each mode of transportation? They are. Uh, all modes of transportation will, will, will see an increase or have seen an increase. Okay. And um, what are the fares now? Uh, the fares now for uh, local service, let's, let's talk about local service, okay. which includes uh, local bus, our metro subway, and light rail. Those fares are actually increasing by 10 cents. The one-way full fares are increasing by 10 cents. They're currently $1.60. They'll be go they've gone up to $1.70. Okay, and that's for the local services, and again, that's bus, metro, and light rail? That's correct, right. Now, what about Mark commuter rail? Uh, Mark and commuter bus, uh, Mark actually, uh, the one-way fares have gone up by a uh, dollar. Um, the bill actually required us to increase our fares based upon the consumer price index over the last five years. Okay. And uh, round it to the nearest dollar. So in the case of Mark service, uh, the one-way fares for Mark and all our zones have gone up uh, one dollar. Okay, and I guess the detailed information on all the fares are available on the MTA website? That's correct, yeah. You can actually go onto our website and find out more information about our fare increase. It's uh, www.mta.maryland.gov. Okay, and I wanted to mention that because we're talking about the increases on one-way fares, but the uh, weekly passes, monthly passes, they still include a substantial discount above paying for the ride every day. That's correct. Uh, all our fares have gone up, including our multi-ride passes. Our multi-ride passes for local service include a day pass, a weekly, and a monthly. Um, those pass products are actually uh, a function of the one-way fare. Okay. So on local service, for instance, the $1.70 uh, is used to calculate what the day pass would be and what the weekly and the monthly. Okay. So um, they're priced to uh, allow a customer to receive a discount. Okay. Um, the more you use those past products, the larger the discount you'll receive. Oh, yeah, and that, that's what, so they are discounted. So the one day pass, how much is a day pass for a bus? A day pass for, uh, for uh, full service will be $4. $4, and that's unlimited rides, That's correct? correct. You can ride all day. You can on, ride all on day. Local bus, metro subway, and and light rail. Okay, all right. I think that's important to emphasize because yes. it's they might encourage persons to buy those weekly passes, monthly passes, or the day passes. Yes, no doubt. Oh, okay, um, so um, what should customers know specifically with Mark and commuter bus as it relates to the fare increase? Are there some specific things they should know? Oh yeah, for um, for our commuter bus and our our Mark customers, it's important to keep in mind that the fares, uh, like I said, haven't increased in 12 years and the fares that just went up will be in place for the next five years. 
the, uh, the, the bill requires us to increase mark and commuter bus service every five years, okay. as opposed to local service, which will be going up every two years. Okay, so uh, that's, that's an important message for mark customers. Yeah. You won't see any other increases for the next, next five, five years. years. Also on mark, one of the things that we have just introduced um, is a new pass product for our mark customers. Uh, we've always had a seven day weekly pass and we've heard from our, our Mark customers that we have a number of our customers who just commute using Mark Monday through Friday. Okay. So we introduced a new fare product. It's a five-day weekly pass product that operates. And it's good for Monday through Friday. Oh, that's great. Okay, so that's a new product. Again, mta.maryland.gov, complete information, or the 539-5000 also? That's correct. You're right. That's correct. You can call our customer information and they'll be more than happy to share information with you. Okay, and I always like to promote the weekend service for Mark. I know you got the new product for Monday through Friday, right. but it's summertime and persons are traveling to D.C. Mark is still operating on weekends? We are, and we are. Okay, so, and again, fair information at, at 539-5000 or mta.merlin. Gov. Any other messages for our customers? I know you all have been working really hard to get this message out. Uh, what, what methods have you used to let customers know? Yeah, besides the website, uh, we have actually have advertised over the last several weeks in 21 community and local newspapers. Uh, we've done a number of email blasts to our customers who, who purchase online or through our web sales. And uh, with Commuter Bus and Mark, that's Approximately 95 percent of our customers. Okay. We also, those who purchase products in the month of June, uh, we had inserts in their mailings that to inform them to inform them of the fare increase. Uh, we've, as I mentioned earlier, we had pop-ups where myself, my, myself and my staff have been out at uh, local uh, uh, bus depots as well as metro and light rail stations, meeting and greeting our customers and sharing information with them. Um, and then, of course, on all our cars and trains, there's. Uh, fair information. Okay, sounds like uh, it's, an, it's a needed uh, increase. It's been 12 years and you all are doing your part so the customers know exactly what's going on. Yes. And again, I'm going to give the number 539-5000 or mta.merlin.gov. Thanks correct. for joining us today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Okay. As part of MTA's effort to improve the service it offers commuters, the agency recently held a dedication ribbon cutting ceremony to announce increased commuter bus service and the opening of a new park and ride lot in Dunkirk, Maryland. MTA Commuter Connections was there. Officials from the Maryland Transit Administration, the Calvert County Board of Commissioners, and the Calvert County State Delegation came together to announce increased commuter bus service to Calvert County and to celebrate the opening of the Dunkirk Park and Ride. The old lot was actually a lot smaller than this, had maybe 150, 160 spots, was completely overcrowded. Um, so it was very definitely utilized, but it was just very crowded. It didn't have really have shelters, it didn't have adequate lighting, and it didn't have any landscaping to it at all. With more than double the capacity of the old lot, this new lot features improved lighting, electric vehicle charging stations, two designated shelters, and enhanced landscaping, making commuters eager to use the space. Beautiful parking lot. It'd be nice to get some more parking lots in the area, but this is a really, really nice one. They did a very good job with it. It's utilized a lot more than honestly that I expected it to be. I mean, it's at least three quarters of the way full right now, and there's about 500 spaces here. The commuter bus service, I think, is a wonderful service. The customers like it. We keep a lot of cars out of Washington, D.C. People get up as early as 3 o'clock in the morning to ride the service, and some of the trips are two hours long, but they really, really appreciate the service. Not only did officials commemorate the new park and ride with a ribbon cutting, but they also announced how MTA will increase service to accommodate the demand of a growing population in Southern Maryland. With the addition of some new stops and the strategic location of others, including this Dunkirk Park and Ride, commuter bus lots are meeting the increased demand of our citizens. This is the most rapidly growing place in the state of Maryland for commuter bus service. I know you've already had this in use for several months, but we're real happy to be here today to cut the ribbon on it. It represents a real commitment, I think, to uh, the needs of the citizens down here and across the state of Maryland. It's not just D.C. and Baltimore that need mass transit, right? It's all of us. As the MTA expands service, more commuters throughout the state will be able to use mass transit. For more information about the additions and service, go to www.mta.maryland.gov. Just ahead, a look at the Maryland State Fair. That's next. Stay with us.
sun Wake the sun Wake the sun Wake the sun You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. There's so much to see and enjoy in Maryland. One of our state's most popular annual events is the Maryland State Fair. Individuals and families from all around the state and region converge on the state fairgrounds in Timonium for lots of excitement and fun and for what many believe are the 11 best days of summer. Maryland State Fair Assistant General Manager Becky Brashear joins us with information on what we can expect to see at this year's event. Welcome to Commuter Connections. Thanks for having us. Okay, the 11 best days of summer. I guess you would agree, right? Absolutely. Okay. Can't be any better. Our Maryland State Fair, let's start with the dates. When is the fair this year? August 28th through September 7th. We okay. end on uh, Labor Day Monday. L Labor Day Monday, and we yep. hit the location, Timonium State Fairgrounds. Mm -hmm which is conveniently located where, if somebody's watching us for 2, the first time? 2200 York Road, right. and uh, easy access to get to it, and, and great parking, so, All right. yep. Good. All right, so for those who aren't familiar with the Maryland State Fair, give us an overview of exactly what it is. Well, it certainly is Maryland's premier agricultural event and showcase. We are just uh, proud to present uh, the Maryland folks who come and bring their agricultural, uh, whether it's livestock, cooking, canning, uh, garden produce, those kinds of things, and exhibit at the fair. There's 22,000 competitive exhibits. Wow. So on the 108 acres, there's uh, a lot to take in in addition to the uh, seven days of uh, thoroughbred racing at the grandstand. Wow, so we got the racing, we've got the livestock, and then we've got the what a lot of people are drawn to, the fair, the rides. The midway. The, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, probably close to 50 pieces of equipment in for that. All the kinds of thrills and spills that you want to take on a uh, carnival midway and uh, 
Degler shows uh, certainly does a, a great presentation for the uh, citizens of Maryland to enjoy the Midway. All right, and this is a family event, right? It is absolutely a family event. You know, from the youngest of the youngest to the oldest of the oldest, we uh, we just love to have uh, folks come to the Maryland State Fair. As you said, the 11 uh, best days of summer. But our theme this year is My Maryland State okay. Fair. And we're trying to get across that the My, My Maryland State Fair is everybody's state wow. fair. And everybody has an integral part and can play an integral role in the fair whether visiting, exhibiting, or taking in the different components that we have at the at the fairgrounds. Okay, we talked about the midway, the livestock, entertainment as always. Uh, any guest artists for this year? Entertainment's always huge. We're going after a different demographic this year, if you will, kind of the Disney Age radio oh. television group. Uh, Fifth Harmony and B. Miller is going to be uh, center stage in the infield on Friday, uh, September the uh, 4th. Everything takes place in the infield. Then on Saturday, we're going to uh, have uh, Fifth Harmony, and they will be uh, doing their programming in the infield as well. And then Sunday, we're going to have a Latino festival. Wow. So we're kind of shaking it up and mixing it up a little bit so everybody can have some ownership in my Maryland State Fair. Wow, that's great. Now, the Latino festival, so there will be specific activities associated with that festival? Primarily through music. Through yep. music, yep. okay. Absolutely, and uh, we recognize that that's a, uh, a, a part of our community that we certainly want to reach and then have some great family entertainment for, for, uh, for everyone. Wow, this sounds exciting. Now, admission to the fair, how much is it? Admission is $8 uh, for adults like us. Okay. Uh, kids uh, six and under, I believe, is five. Okay. And all that information certainly can be found uh, on the fair's website at MarylandStateFair.com. MarylandStateFair.com. I'm glad you uh, gave that out. Um, also, how many people are expected for the State Fair? Well, let's just say that's weather-driven. Okay. Um, and uh, if it's great weather, we can have uh, up to 400, 460,000 people. Okay. If it's kind of a rainy week, which we all pray that everybody will yeah. do their rain day, it's uh, right around 360,000. Yeah, so. and, and, and even with the rain, it's still... It's a I've nice got, warm you, rain. You know, <laughs> I, I've gone out there and gotten caught in the rain, and it's part of the fun. When you it got everybody is. in the car, man, it, you know, it doesn't spoil the day That's right. completely. It, and often the rain passes and things clear Sun up. Sun comes out and it's a great day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I, I asked you this off, uh, off camera. I want to ask you again, how old is the Merlin State Fair? We'll have our 134th fair this year. 134 uh, years. Actually, when you look back in the history books, it, there were, the fair actually began to take root in 1878 in Lutherville uh, as kind of a picnic formulation kind of a thing, but it has ebbed and flowed over the years into what it is today. 134 years. Mm -hmm. And what is it today? The 11 best days of summer. At my Maryland State Fair. My Maryland, my Maryland State Fair. Okay, That's right. All right, again, I know person watching. Let's give out the dates again. What are, what are the dates? August 28th through September the 7th. We will have a soft opening on Thursday evening, August 27th. So anyone who wants to come out and partake in the Midway attractions that you just spoke about, that's a great time to be able to do that as well. All right, good. And I always get confused on when, when it ends. It ends on Labor, Labor Day, Day evening. Labor Day evening. Mm -hmm. So it, if, if you haven't made it by Labor Day, you've got one last chance. That's it. You got Maryland it. Maryland State Fair. Give, can you give us the website one time? MarylandStateFair.com. MarylandStateFair.com. I think I'm coming this year. Good. I'm We'd back. love to have you. I'm back. That's wonderful. All right, okay. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having us. There are many people in transit behind the scenes at MTA who help keep buses, trains, and various services operating each day. On today's program, we introduce you to one of these dedicated individuals. This employee trains many of the frontline transit professionals you meet in your travels. Meet Elmer Coppage, MTA's Manager of Operations Training. He has a number of responsibilities, but probably his most important job is to mold bus operators and instructors into outstanding professionals. I lead the instructors in a way where they can uh, provide training to our new bus operator candidates as well as existing bus operator candidates. I'm responsible for uh, post-accident training. I'm also responsible for uh, recertification of all of our bus operators here at the MTA. After serving the MTA for 25 years, Elmer often recalls when he first started as a bus operator. It was a celebrity status, and I share this with, with a lot of the new folks that come in and, and let them know that, you know, I remember times going into stores and, and things of that nature, and people would remember you because you transported them from point A to point B. And not just from point A to point B, you did it with a smile. 
Elmer has embraced his nostalgia decorating his office with transit models over the course of his career. I am a collector of uh, MTA memorabilia as well as uh, transit items. I believe in sharing the history with folks, getting people to understand how we got from here to where we are now. Aside from collecting and spending time with his family, Elmer thrives on another kind of wheels. Skating is a passion of mine as well. There's so much positive things going on. Aside from skating on the hardwood and, and being able to do uh, the tricks, I love the uh, camaraderie that we have within the skate world, the uh, networking, and just being able to just be on the floor with um, a large amount of people at one given time and, and how we all synchronize and, and we're all doing different things, but we're going around this, this circle and everybody is just in sync. With the perfect work-life balance, Elmer is truly enjoying the ride. It's been very rewarding. I enjoy everything that I do here at the MTA and I, I, I just love being a transit professional. Light Rail is renovating its train cars. We'll take a look at this project next. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, um, this job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills? Check. Uh, driver's license? Check. And a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Light Rail is presently upgrading its rail fleet through a rehabilitation of all light rail cars. Light Rail Director Gary Hinton joins us with information on this upgrade. Gary, welcome to Commuter Connections. Thank you for having me, sir. Okay, so we're upgrading the light rail vehicles, and tell us a little bit more about it. Well, the light rail vehicles were, uh, they have exceeded their recommended uh, mid-life mm -hmm. rehabilitation, so they were aging fleet, so we took the time out now. We felt it was necessary to um, rehab our cars. Okay, and so it's a total of how many cars? Total of 53 cars. And all of them will be rehabbed? Yes, they will be. Okay, so let's let's calm all of our riders down. We're not going to do them all at one time. No. 
you know, so the system will keep operating. That's really important for everybody. Yes, it will. Okay, so how does the process work? Does it happen here locally, and exactly what will happen? Well, right now we have five cars up in New York. Uh, it's Hornell, New York, at Alstrom Transportation Incorporated. They're actually doing the uh, rehab of our cars. Okay, and what does the rehab involve? And, and I understand it's interior and exterior? Yes, it is. It's a 14-point system that will be overhauled. That includes the car body, trucks, propulsion, auxiliary power, uh, car control, friction brakes, the couplers, the doors, the lighting, the high vac system, ATP, high voltage, and communications. Wow, so it sounds like we're getting new cars. It'll be just as well as a new car, yes. Just as well as a new car. So again, five cars are in New York. So what, are you doing them five at a time? Or, or how, how does the process work? It, it's sort of like an assembly line process. And once we get the first car done, the prototype car, we'll get a better feel for how long it takes to get the other cars done. Uh, the first car is due back in February of next year, 2016. So, so when did the first car go up to New York? Well, we got the notice to proceed in September 1, 2013. Okay, then shortly after that, I imagine they took ownership of the first vehicle. And started uh, transporting the vehicles up to uh, New York. Okay, and again, uh, you said earlier that first car will be back February of next year, and from that car is how you'll set the framework or the schedule for how long each car will take. Exactly, and we we're, we already know that, or we're scheduled to have all cars completed in June of 2018. Wow, okay, so it's 53 cars being rehabbed, so when the cars come back, that car comes back next February, the customers will feel like they're sitting in a new light rail vehicle. Oh, exactly. But just be mindful that when that first car comes back, we have to run it through a series of tests to get it accepted for our main line here. Okay. Um, this whole effort, I, I assume, is, a, is an overall effort to improve and enhance the ride for customers. How, how important is this project for the system? Oh, that, that's very important. We'll improve the, uh, the safety of the car, the reliability of the car, and the efficiency of the car. Okay. Um, and for the customers, I guess, they, they'll have a better ride and, and it'll look better and, you know, it'll be more efficient. It'll be very similar to buying a brand new car yourself. Okay, good. It just, it's a lot bigger. Yes. And it carries a lot more people. Yes, okay. Yes. All right, good. You're director of light rail now, 40 years with the MTA? That's correct. But you started where? I started as a police officer here at the MTA. All right, and that was, give me your rise to. It's, it's, to, it's, it's been a journey. Rise uh, to the throne here. I, I started as a police officer, got promoted to a Metro supervisor, then got promoted to a light rail chief supervisor, then went back to Metro as a superintendent, and then I became deputy director and then director. So it's, it's been uh, an exciting journey. And I think it's important for our viewers to know you direct the MTA's light rail system. That's correct. You're, you're the top. I'm sitting with the head man in charge here. Thank you. Okay, so, so again, we're rehabbing the 53 uh, light rail vehicles, better ride, more efficient ride. Safer ride. Safer, safer ride uh, for our customers. Uh, if our customers have questions, I guess, ab about this whole rehab project, I imagine they can call the 539-5000 number. Uh, they can, and then the customer service would redirect them or get the information from engineering or light rail to better answer the question. So how much is the entire project cost? The total project is budgeted at $175 million. Okay, thanks, Gary. All right, well, we look forward to seeing those nicer light rail vehicles. Thank you for having me. Okay, that brings us to the end of another Commuter Connections program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care.